Ah, YouTube, my boy, good of you to join me. We iPad owners are a privileged few, accustomed to the finer things in life. We do not sully ourselves with the common riffraff of iPhone applications. So it was with great joy that I welcomed a review copy of Beatmaker 2 by Intua, which now supports the iPad. Tally ho, old boy, tally ho! Beatmaker 2 is a full-on studio, so it would be really tedious for me to go through all of the features. Instead, I'm just going to show you my favorites. My favorite feature of Beatmaker 2 is definitely the Chop Lab, but before we get to that, we need to bring in something we can chop. So it's iTunes import. That's going to look weird for you guys. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to load up Civilization. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the goofy music of the 40s, I highly encourage you to put the Andrew sisters into Pandora for awesome. Now we want to edit that. Uh, so we'll open up our saved wave here, which as you see is uh, 30 megabytes. And I can't figure out how to delete these uh, without going into the uh, terminal or iFile. But uh, you see, it's way too big. So we have to pick a zone that we want to play with. And there is all kinds of goofy going on in the back half of this song around here. Right here. They have things like the autumn bomb. So I think I'll stay where they have things like the autumn bomb. So I've got my section that I want to play around with. So I'm going to extract that and I'm going to save that. And now I have a much smaller segment that I can play around with in Chop Lab. So I go to my content, put uh, Civilization Outro. And now we've got uh, just the bits that we've already extracted. So now I can set markers. And each one of these markers represents a pad. So this first bit here is... Like the autumn bomb. So that right there represents one pad. And we got 16 pads, so let's throw in some more uh, markers here. So I think I'll stay where I. Oh, I need to extend that a little bit. So I think I'll stay where I am. Um. And now our next. Marker is a long one here. Civilization. I kind of like that. That was completely by accident. Sometimes that happens. But uh, let's grab this. And I want to shrink that. I'll stay right here. All right. And now we just uh, hit the X and now we can set it as a preset. And the enable fade in and fade out is something you can change later. Uh, I recommend starting off with that though because it uh, will make the samples play between one another a lot smoother because it's gonna add just a, a minute fade in and fade out on the ends of the uh, sample. So you just create a pre uh, preset and you name it something as you see, I've already got a civilization BMK2 right here and you'd hit save with samples and there you go. So once you have your BMK2 file made, you can load that up onto the pads and you can also load up the individual uh, slices that you created. And now you can play around with that however you want and make a, a live remix. They have things like the autumn bomb. So I think I'll stay where I am. Civilization, I'll stay right here. And this is awesome, because you can just start completely screwing around with a song. You can play around with its phrases, you can play around with its musical phrases. Just all kinds of great creativity is available to you uh, with a competent sample chopper as Chop Lab is. Let's move on over to the keyboard sampler now. And it comes with 500 megabytes of sample. But I'm going to show you how to get your own samples into here in some amazing ways. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Addictive Synth, which is a synth by Versen, and Hokusai, 
which is a audio editor that has the ability to copy and paste within both uh, audio copy paste as well as paste bin. So it makes a great bridge so I can take uh, drum samples from my MS-20, which uses audio copy, and plug them into uh, Beatmaker 2 here, which uses paste bin. Or even in the case of uh, compatible applications like Addictive Synth and Beatmaker 2, which both use uh, paste bin, it's handy just to be able to shape the audio uh, to make it a, a much cleaner sample. So let me show you how that works. So here I am in Addictive, and I've got a little... Uh, patch that I want to import into Beatmaker 2. And to do that I simply hit the record function and I've got it recording a bar and now I've got that in my paste bin. I can go over now to Hokosai where I've got a new project and I create audio paste from legacy board down here. You have to scroll way down because it keeps copies of all your recent stuff and done and now I've got it right here and if I throw this straight into Beatmaker 2 I can play around with it you know and, and play around with the envelopes and try to make that sounding smooth but here in Hokosai you can do a fade in on one end and a fade out on the tail end And now, it's going to sound a lot smoother when we're actually playing with this on a keyboard because we're going to be hitting all kinds of different keys. And we don't want any sharp sounds on either end. Hakosai is a, uh, obviously an entirely different application and it's free. But uh, in order to get any of this functionality, you need to cough up some money and it, it's like an a la carte thing. I think it's like three bucks to get the audio copy and paste uh, function. And it might be a different amount for the fade in and fade out. I don't really remember because I just went with the all you can eat. Uh, I think it was like 10 bucks. Uh, and I'm pretty famously cheap when it comes to paying for apps. So if I'm paying 10 bucks for the in-app purchase, you know it's a worthwhile investment because it's just going to make your life so much easier to work with all these different apps. So now I've got uh, this uh, smooth sample here. I'm going to select it. And now I'm going to use the same audio copy paste feature here and although it says audio copy it's also going straight into a paste bin copy and now I can take that into Beatmaker 2 and we import that with the pasteboard import to BM2 and I'll save that so back over to the keyboard here we can't just go to this and load it from our content because we haven't actually created the keyboard file and to do that we have to go over to the keyboard settings and mapping and create a new zone. So now we've created a, a zone all the way across the keyboard here for a sample. So let's load up our sample. And I need to set the bass note because if I play this C, I recorded it on a C3, but as you hear, that doesn't sound quite right. So we go over here to our base key and tell it that this is a C3. And it sounds perfect. And there are some surprising levels of complexity to this sampler here. In addition to the filter and the filter envelope, you've got two LFOs that you can assign to volume, pitch, cutoff, and resonance. And you can have a lot of fun doing this. Although I gotta give you a tip here for cut off in order to hear anything you want to set this offset which is where it starts to play around with the sound with the LFO you want to keep that between uh, 1 and 5 percent or else you're not going to hear the difference it's going to be too high so as you hear it's not uh, sustaining when you hold it it just stops when it reaches the end and you can change this by going into edit sample and then selecting an area that you want the sample to repeat in. As you see here, I've already got one selected. I took the uh, area where it's got a pretty even amplitude. And then I hit the set sustain loop. And now when I save, you see it changed the sample here. And 
it's still not sustaining, so we got to tell it to do that by going over to here to hold and loop. Now, you, you can hear that that's kind of fucked up, but you get the idea. You just try, kind of shape it to an area that's going to sound good in the loop. You should also save your keyboards. And that brings me to my last tip for you. And this one is only applicable to jailbreak users. And honestly, everybody should jailbreak just to fix the way that the autocorrection works whenever you're typing an email. But if you've got your device already jailbroken and you've got something like iFile here, go over to Beatmaker's library. And here you will find a keyboard sampler directory, which is 500 megabytes. For comparison, all of GarageBand is less than 500 megabytes. This is just a crazy amount of uh, samples that are included here. And since I'm not going to use any of those, I can just delete that. And as you see, I've now freed up a lot of drive space. I'll leave a description of how to do this in uh, Terminal as well. But uh, if you do decide to do this, you need to make sure that you go into your BeatMaker 2 settings and tell it to update the database. So if you close out of BeatMaker 2 and relaunch it, it'll uh, rescan its database and update it to know that it does not have its samples anymore and it should start using your samples. Usually when you hear me complaining that uh, uh, application doesn't offer enough sound design, what I'm really saying is it doesn't offer enough synthesis and BeatMaker 2 doesn't offer any amount of synthesis. And for my workflow, I like to be able to completely and drastically change any sound on the fly because I, I find typically whenever I'm making music halfway in, I'm deciding, oh my God, this, this one thing right here needs to be completely reworked. And having to go through the process of bringing it in from another application into BeatMaker 2 is kind of a, a cumbersome, but it is a lot of fun. I like the, uh, the Chop Lab and the Sample Lab. They work very well, especially with Hokosai. Uh, so I'm giving this one my recommendation because it is absolutely the slickest way to start remixing songs on the iPad. If you enjoyed this review, you could subscribe to me on YouTube or visit me at discord.com.